So good morning. Uh, today we are uh, back to the study of the mediums book. Um, that now we move to the third Sunday of the month. Uh, last month we started chapter 26. Elmo actually started. Elmo is not here today, he's on vacations. Questions that may be addressed to spirits. And we did the first item, which is item 286 which is preliminary observations. And um, we talked about uh, the, the questions we can add, address the spirits, uh, the form and scope and what type of questions should uh, we address the spirit. So the first, uh, hi Sally, welcome back. We miss you. You're on mute, you're on mute. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad to be back again. I'm settled and I've got internet. Great. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Um, so uh, the first uh, thing that we, we need to address here is uh, why should we ask questions to the spirits, right? That we discussed in the past, but it's important to bring it back. Um, and Karnak is going to address this uh, when it talks about uh, uh, asking questions to the spirits. It's not the work that we do in our regular mediumship meetings here uh, because we receive spirits that are in need of help and assistance. So we, we open ourselves to, to the, the spirits that uh, are able to communicate, the directors, spiritual directors of the meeting choose the spirits that are going to communicate. But if we want to learn, if we want to be instructed, it's very natural that we can ask questions to the spirits. The, the question of what Kardec is addressing in this chapter is what type of questions? What is appropriate and inappropriate? So we discussed uh, the preliminary observations last man, month um, and Kardec tells us that they, they should, should be clear and uh, concise and not complex because um, it, it then it becomes a little bit uh, difficult for the spirits if uh, we get lost in our questions for them to, to understand what we really want to know. And uh, we should prepare the questions before we address them also, he says. So um, he tells us to ask serious questions, to not, not ask foolish questions, to ask questions about uh, us as eternal spirits, not questions that uh, uh, will satisfy our curiosity here uh, in the physical plane, questions related to our physical existence, unless there are questions that will uh, help us um, and guide us, okay? So that's what we discussed last month. Uh, we, can, we can go back if you have any questions, but we are going to start on 287. Soraida, can you read this for us? Of course, absolutely, John. Okay, 287. Some people think that it is best not to ask questions at all, but rather to wait for a spirit's teaching without requesting it. This is a mistake, however. Spirit, spirits obviously provide spontaneous teachings of an elevated reach and which we should not neglect, but there are explanations for which we would have to wait a long time if we did not solicit them directly. Without the questions we propose, neither the Spirit's book nor this present work would have ever been written or would at least have been much less complete and many very important problems would still not be resolved. Far from being inappropriate, questions are highly important for our learning when we formulate them within proper limits. They offer the further advantage of helping us unmask deceptive spirits who, more pretentious than knowledgeable, rarely stand up under tightly logical explanation, wherein the questions lead them to fin finally exposing themselves. Since truly high order spirits have nothing to fear about this process, they are the first to suggest that we, we ask for explanations concerning obscure points whereas the others are afraid of confronting strong arguments and take great care to avoid them. That is why they usually suggest to the mediums whom they wish to dominate and force 
to accept the utopian ideas, to abstain from all controversy regarding their teachings. Whoever has well understood what we have stated thus far in this work already has some idea of the scope to which we should limit the questions addressed to spirits. Nevertheless, in order to be more certain, we will now provide their responses to the main subjects that individuals with little experience generally present to them. Okay, so what Kardec is telling us here is that, uh, yes, it's important to ask questions to the spirits. Without asking questions, we wouldn't have the spirit's book or the medium's book or uh, the, the codification. So uh, he's not, he's telling us that the importance of asking for explanations from the spirits, it's uh, very relevant. Uh, we know from um, Francisco Xavier late, later when he, Francisco Xavier told us that the phone rings from there to here, not from here to there, right? That's very mm -hmm. famous phrase that he uh, left with us meaning that uh, we can we can call the spirits but uh, if they are not ready they are not going to communicate but what uh, francisco xavier was referring to is you know you want to talk to you want to receive a message from your father so you ask uh, you 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 try to to ask for your father to send a message and uh, maybe we know that maybe your father is in no condition of uh, of uh, producing a message either because he's busy or because he's not in a, a evolved enough level to communicate or many other things. But what Kardec is talking here, it's again, he's not asking specific spirits. He's asking quest, important questions to the spirits that are avail, available to give the communication. So let's say in a, in a mediumship meeting that we have, if we would ask the spiritual guides to help us and guide us on a specific subject, uh, we can, because then we are asking the spirits that are available to help us. And if the question is serious and the question, and we deserve to receive the answer, the answer will be given by whatever spirit uh, is available to give the message to us. Uh, and um, they say here, uh, Kardec says here, that uh, high order spirits are not afraid from being asked questions. They are just, uh, they just want to, for, for us to ask important questions. Uh, what, what they say here with proper limits, right? So if you are going, and we are going to see this because now we have a, a lot of a Q and A uh, that Kardec asked the spirits uh, moving forward, but um, covering different aspects of what we should and what we shouldn't ask and what type of spirits are going to answer us the questions that uh, we address them, okay? So uh, I think it's important here to understand that uh, questions can be asked, the subject is what we have to be careful and the type of questions, okay? okay. Any questions here? Yes. How do you yes. ask the, I might have missed this in your first lesson. How do you ask the question? Is it something you intend? Is it something that you um, prepare and then meditate on? Or do you actually wait, um, write it and then wait for the answer to come? Um, and all the above can be. Um, so, you know, you can, uh, the spirits can, the more evolved spirits can read our thoughts. So you, you think about something and you ask, you can do this in our prayers, right? You ask for guidance, inspiration, um, and they will give you uh, guidance. They will give you directions, even if you are not aware, even aware if the spirit, if, if comes from the spirits or comes from your self, right? Now, in a meeting, you can either uh, write a question or you can specifically if you it's a psychophony you can ask directly when a medium is receiving a spirit you can ask the spirit the spirit directly okay so several different forms you can write you can think 
you can address verbally depends on the situation and the environment. Thank you. Okay. Luis. Uh, João, in our mediumship meetings uh, in our center, we always, you know, give space for the spirit benefactors to speak, sometimes they do, but we never have asked a question. In your experience in the spirit centers that you have worked in, have you ever asked questions? No, because again, the type of meeting we have, and it's the same that you have, right, is assisting suffering spirits. So that's the main objective. The communications from the mentors, either through psychography or psychophony, um, is, is a bonus, so to say. That's not the objective. So we, we, we are open uh, the, 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 we open the, the floor for them to, to give the messages and we receive every week. Renato is not here today. He's the one, one that receives messages every week from, from spiritual mentors. Uh, Jusara receives also messages through psychography. And, uh, you know, uh, we have been, Laura has been receiving messages by the end of the meetings. And normally it's by the end of the meetings, right? The, the, the mentors will communicate when we, are, when we finish the, the assistance or in the very beginning of the meeting. The very first communication can also be from a mentor, but that's almost never happens in our mm -hmm. meetings. I think it happened maybe once or twice, Sorida, if you remember, yeah. Carol, if you remember. Yes, yes, once or twice. But yeah, but Norm, the one who had, had given us that one time. Sorry, I, I believe it was Jusara who who started the medium, and she uh, gave a a message that was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and also I think there was sort of a message involving for everybody to be on their toes, be vigilant, um, you know, sort of shore up any negative energy and be present. So it was a very profound uh, message. It started the, the session in a very uplifting way. Yeah, but, uh, but again, Sally, it's just because the type of our meetings is not uh, asking questions. It's not to, you know, we, we leave it open for the mentors to, to give us messages if they want, but not every meeting mm -hmm. that we have messages from the mentors. Um, you know, some meetings we don't have any. Uh, it happens um, because the, the 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 objective of the work is not that. Okay. Um, so now we are going to start with the questions, um, yes. and we are going to 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 go by each one of them. We, uh, you know, I'll, I'll make quick comments. And if you have anything to add, please, uh, you know, uh, say, because I'm, I'm not going to be asking after every question if anyone has a question. Please just let me know if you have anything. Okay, thanks. Okay, okay. appropriate and inappropriate questions. 288, do spirits willingly respond to questions asked of them? It depends on the questions, serious spirits take pleasure in responding to those whose purpose is goodness and your advancement. They do not listen to worthless questions, however. So um, serious spirits will answer serious questions. Um, not so serious spirits will answer not so serious questions. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, we, 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 we have to think of the spiritual world as an extension of the physical world, right? You are in a group of friends, you ask a silly question, one of your friends will give you a silly answer just for the fun of it. You ask a serious question, if someone knows how to answer and has an opinion, they will ask, they will respond uh, with a serious answer. The spiritual world, you have spirit, serious spirits that again, uh, whenever you are in a serious meeting, they will prevent uh, um, less evolved spirits or mocking spirits to give the answers to distract us in most of the cases. But uh, if we ask uh, uh, silly questions, they will allow um, silly answers to be received if it's a learning experience for us, right? 
if you ask if you are going to win the lottery, they are not the serious spirits are not going to answer that. Um, you know, uh, not so serious spirits can give you an answer, which is maybe right or wrong, but just for the fun of it. Okay, Luis. Sure. Well, uh, it's complicated today because I really want to talk. By the way, guys, uh, I've been you know home for 14 days, uh, testing positive for COVID. I am well, but so I you know I have to talk. I apologize for that, <laughs> Johnny. Uh, uh, I find in our uh, in the mediumship meetings of our center, this sort of. Uh, uh, tendency to to seriousness on the benef on, on, on the mentors use use this word but on the benefactor spirits sometimes may be overly serious uh, do you feel the same in your meetings uh, it seems you know in in our center seems something like a manual you know very rispid all the time do you feel the same in your center um and uh, seriousness, absolutely. Uh, the messages we receive always call our attention to to the importance of work of the work, but always giving uh, it's generally uplifting messages mm -hmm. to 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 guide us, to inspire us, to help help us and assist us. And uh, I'll, I'll ask uh, Soraida and Carol to also to to give their their view here because they they are part of all the meetings. So. But um, I I don't I don't see the, the their their messages as um, as a Emmanuel type discipline discipline discipline. Um, I don't feel that. But I don't know if Carol Sorada if they, you feel that. No, I, I don't think it's so much discipline. I think is in, is in, uh, inspiring. Uh, they uplift, like you say. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I am there and I'm amazed how they answer and and how illuminating you feel when you hear these words of so so much inspiration. So uh, it, it, I think if anything, it's it's a beautiful uh, thing when they answer and response and 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 it's serious, totally serious uh, answers that they give because without it, you wouldn't be so inspired and. And understand what they're trying to give you to help and guide us. So, yeah, yeah, serious, very serious, always. Yeah, that's that's important. But uh, but normally uplifting. I I think, Carol, you have any thoughts? Uh, I would agree on that, and I always find that it's always profound in many ways. Sometimes there might be messages that perhaps I don't understand right away, but through staying centered and focused, that seriousness really assists in helping to clarify. So I find it very, very helpful. And it's always in a teaching modality. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. OK. All right. Number two. Number three. Two. OK. Is asking a serious question enough to receive a serious response? No, it also depends on the spirit who responds. But won't a serious question keep frivolous spirits away? It is not the question itself that keeps them away, but rather the character of the one who acts. That's, that's a very good point here, right? Because first, the first question by Kardec, uh, we, we, we would think that a serious question would be enough to receive a serious answer, right? A serious response. Uh, but here the spirits are telling two things. It depends on who asks and depends on who responds. So because you can ask a serious question with a, a devious intention or a misguided intention and of course, the superior spirits, they can read our minds. They know exactly what we are thinking. So if they, they know we are trying to fool them or they know we are trying to, uh, to, to uh, it's a pretentious question in a sense, right? 
the the pseudo wise spirits as they call in the classification of the spirits uh, they can allow a frivolous spirit to answer the question just you know uh, a not so a, a serious question but not in with a serious ob objective may receive a not so serious answer mm -hmm. uh, by a spirit that is not so evolved uh, I think this is a very interesting question, and it's you know it's for us to to reflect also on the um, the, the more evolved spirits. They are aware of everything that is happening around us. So what our intentions, our thoughts. Now, uh, can uh, serious and uh, you know uh, we discuss that in our meetings again, Luis. Uh, sometimes you get. Um, some spirits in our uh, mediumship meetings that we get surprised why, uh, because they are really trying to make fun of us or trying to distract us from the objective of the meeting. You know, some spirits when we start having the conversation and you clearly, after two, three minutes, you are clearly seeing that it's not going anywhere, that they are there to distract us. And then we ask, why would the spirits allow the, the spiritual mentors allow these spirits to come if they know the spirits are going to to distract us instead of uh, you know uh, bringing us the seriousness of the objective. And the, the, uh, the Kardec tells us and the spirits tells us it's to keep us on our toes, to make us reflect and take it seriously the work, because it's very easy uh, for us to to you know to think oh okay i'm in a serious meeting the spirits are taking care of it, of it so i don't need really to to concentrate and to focus because the spirits will will take care of it they will bring back my concentration and my focus if i need it and then you start thinking in uh you know your the dinner you are going to have after or you know you lose your focus and your concentration and the spirits will sometimes will allow this uh this distractions to come to bring back our focus, to bring back our attention and to call our attention that, uh, you know, we need to study. We need to be aware of what's going on. We need to be active participants in the whole uh, process so we can uh, improve the quality of the mediumship work. So uh, I understand your point, but I, I, I wonder if we also cannot add some kind of help to that particularly uh, uh, joking spirit. Maybe not at that particular moment, but uh, uh, it, 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 you know, it's a, a construction. Maybe we are able to, to set one or two bricks in there as well, even though the guy is complicated. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, any, any conversation we have with a spirit will stay with them, even if they have nothing to if, if, if they, we don't see any gain from it. And many times we don't see any gain because again, in 10 minutes, you're not going to change anyone, right? Uh, you can uh, uh, make them awake up to the reality, make them reflect and analyze. But many times uh, in our, especially the most difficult spirits that, that come and uh, communicate, we, we don't change them in, in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We can just prepare them for some new reality or some new understanding. And that these um, frivolous spirits that will be allowed to come, yes, the group benefits from it, the spirits benefit from it, we all benefit from it in one way or another, even if it's how to not to, uh, to do next time, right? How, no, how, no, no. Because many times, and uh, you, you, you are a, also a counselor, Luis, so, uh, a dialoguer, so you know that. Many times you analyze your conversation and uh, you learn what not to do for next time, right? Because of course we make mistakes. Uh, I had an experience like um, some weeks ago, you know, that the spirit got very uh, angry with me and uh, and said, you know, you disrespect me. I, I have no intention to continue this conversation. And he was right. He was absolutely right. You know, I, I didn't took him seriously enough or how you know with a with a, a with the good at, at attention I, I try to so it it's 
it's important. Everything is a learning experience and it is important for us. Even those frivolous spirits, you're absolutely right. They are learning and we are learning. In our center, uh, most of the times, we try to direct spirits to a triage center. Uh, uh, so even those, <coughs> you know, very complicated ones, uh, similar to the ones that you mentioned, uh, we try to to direct them. They, they usually go. Yeah, we we do, we do the same. Also, we put them to sleep, or we say that there is spiritual companions that we take the nurses, the doctors, the uh, the assistants that uh, we will, we will guide them and direct them. Yeah. So, and, yes. And yeah, uh, it's also so important. You were saying that. Uh, I think is that most of the time they are trying to test us. And it, it's so beautiful that Elmo and, and you respond and give the right answers. Sometimes, yes, they'll question you, but it's amazing. We sit there and we listen to you and how well you respond and answer them to help them, even though at times they're very upset and angry. But I think it's the whole point is about testing us the group has to be alert and understand the needs uh and, and, and take it serious that they're there and you're there and we're all there to help and assist so i must i must say it's i'm sometimes amazed of how you answer and and guide them and it comes it comes to you naturally both of you so i think it's a part of experience and learning and studying that it comes to this point but yes wow. we have to be careful because they are testing us every minute that we're there yeah I mean, it's, it's uh, inspiration plays a big part on, on it right yeah okay okay number three yeah what kinds of questions are particularly disagreeable to good spirits all that are needless acts out of curiosity or meant to test them, they do not respond to those, to these and will withdraw. Are there questions that are disagreeable to imperfect spirits? Only those that can make them display their ignorance or their ruse when they are trying to be deceptive. Otherwise, they will respond to anything without any concern for the truth. So, um, again, the first question is, is kind of obvious, right? What questions the good spirits don't like the ones that are uh, useless right mm -hmm. that uh, we ask out of curiosity you know um, am i going to win the lottery or if we want to test them so one you know uh, you know a subject very well but you want to test the spirit and you ask the subject you, you ask the question that you know the answer they know what goes inside our mind so if you know the answer they are going to not respond and uh, they will allow the imperfect spirits to replace them and give the answer and what questions are disagreeable to imperfect spirits questions that unmask them questions that uh, will make them uh, as, as uh, they say here display their ignorance or to uh, that when we we try to to show them that we know that they are being deceptive that is disagreeable but if it's not like that they will answer anything we uh, we we question because they have no concern for the truth as they say here so they will give us whatever answer they they come and 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 again the it's a little bit more complex than that because sometimes you have answers from um the pseudo wise spirits right that uh, think they know and answer questions according to their knowledge which may not be uh the the real knowledge right and uh and again we just have to look out there in the world right how many uh, even religions were formed by uh, mediums that were deceived by spirits. And I'm not going to 
name any names here because I don't think it's uh, it's uh, prudent. But uh, but there are many uh, beliefs out there that were based on uh, on obsessions, on misguiding spirits, giving a whole books and whole treatises of uh, of spirituality or other things. So we, we need to be very careful. Uh, Kardec make, make, made sure that he received questions from several different mediums in different locations. He wouldn't consider uh, questions received by only one medium. Even the mediums that work with him, the girls that work with him, he wouldn't uh, publish answers given only to one medium. He would compare to other similar questions received from other uh, spirits, other mediums, uh, to make sure that he was uh, publishing the right answer and giving the right answer. And if it was not, he would he would use the spiritist review for specific answers and comment. So if you read the Spirit's review, you see a, a lot of communications received from uh, different mediums that he would comment, analyze, and discuss in a more detailed way. But the, the publications, the five books of the codification, are messages that uh, Kardec only published um, uh, after making sure that they were real and they were true. So that's the concern here. Um, and um, it's it's very important. And uh, I'm, you know, I, I I came in contact with some publications here in this country that um, are supposed coming from uh, Jesus Christ or other superior spirits, and uh, I read them, and they are shallow. And it's very interesting how many followers they have from these shallow communications. Uh, so it is a risk, and we have to be very careful and 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 you know remember what Kardec told us: it's better to discard ten truths than to accept one lie. The truths, if they are true, they'll come back. The lie can cause a lot of damage, and we are seeing how much damage lies are causing in our daily environment in this uh, in this world, right? Okay. Yes. Number four. Number four. What about persons who only regard spirit communications as a dis distraction or pastime, or as a way to obtain revelations about questions of a personal note? Low order spirits like such persons very much, who like themselves love entertainment and they're very pleased when they manage to deceive them. Ouija board. If you want to play with a Ouija board, you are going to, to have communications from the spirits. What type of spirits are going to communicate? Those that want to have fun, right? Mm -hmm. uh, same again, think about us here in our daily lives. You go to an to amusement park. Who are there? People that want to have fun, right? I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's wrong. It's just that people want to have fun. Uh, if we want to ask things of of a material, uh, physical nature, right? Uh, who I'm going to marry, uh, if I'm going to become rich, if I'm going to, uh, to meet the love of my life, or should I get divorced? We are going to have spirits that uh, will take pleasure in answering our questions. Would be these serious answers or believable answers? Uh, doubtful, but, um, you know, again, um, we have to be careful here to separate because in this country, we have a lot of psychics, right? Mm -hmm. And people go to the psychics to ask about their physical uh, lives and uh, what's going to happen to them. But some of these people that go there are serious and are in really need of help. So they may receive serious answers from serious spirits in a not so serious environment mm -hmm. because the spirits will use every available method to help us and assist us if we deserve the help and assistance. 
So that's the other side of the coin that is important for us to understand. Um, I'm not saying that uh, when you go to a psychic and you pay, you are going to get uh, the right answers because most of the time you are not. But it is possible. It is uh, if, if you really need and you really, it's time for you, you deserve the answer, right? You are, you know, you are uh, sick and you don't know any better. You go to a psychic looking for a cure. If you're going to receive the cure, if you really deserve the help and assistance, the spirits that uh, your guardian angel and your protecting spirits will provide you with the assistance you need. Okay. João. Yes. Uh, uh, maybe I, 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 I could add a, a, a little recommendation here. This is the recommendation from our center. Uh, uh, we, it's not our counsel that people should uh, look for soothsayers or other law order mediums, or not law order mediums, but mediums who are in an, you know, not such in communication with spirits that are not uh, really uh, 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 supported by uh, uh, elevated spirit benefactors. Uh, what we find is that they might later be accompanied by spirits that, you know, they found in that soothsayer or whatever, and it might not be positive for them in their day-to-day -day lives. So uh, uh, that's the recommendation that we give to people who, who you know, go to our spirit center for to be cared for and we say you better not do that because it might not be you know good for you yeah i i agree and that's also a recommendation we we give in our center right don't go don't go after this uh, this uh, uh, so-called mediums or this uh, you know in Brazil, uh, is Umbanda is very, very problematic. Very, very problematic. I mean, we receive people who have been, you know, uh, 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 obsessed by spirits from Umbanda for years, for 10 years, for over that, and very complicated. Yeah, but, uh, but again, uh, uh, even in those, uh, and, and many of those in Brazil call themselves spirit centers, right? The Umbanda. The houses of Umbanda, which is the African religions that uh, um, that uh, it, they're very common, especially in the Northeast. But even in those, um, there are some serious workers and some serious work, serious work being done. Divaldo has one book that is all in a Umbanda uh, center. One of those books of the Manuel Filomeno de Miranda collection. I don't remember exactly which one that it's the work of a rescue of, uh, and they are assisted and helped by spirits in the, you know, uh, in a Umbanda house. So um, I'm just saying that every, you, you find truth everywhere and you find uh, good, um, uh, good resources everywhere. But of course the recommendation that we, 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 we say in the spiritist centers is if you can avoid that, you should avoid because you are opening yourself to, to risks that uh, you don't know the the consequences, uh, yeah. but what 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 I'm uh, you know here in the U.S. is a different reality, right? People that go to the psychics, they have no idea that spiritism exists, and they have no idea that uh, of the risks associated with it. So, the more you know, the more responsible you are. The less you know, the less responsible you are for the things you are doing. There are consequences, but uh, you know you may receive assistance and you may not in face that ser more serious consequence if you are not really know what you are doing and your intentions are um, uh, are good intentions, right? Um, you know, it's 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 a case by case, but yes, uh, for us here that we know better, we we have to avoid all this uh, this uh, so called mediums out there that are you know, fortune tellers and things like that. And uh, Kardec is going to talk about it uh, later in this Q&A yeah. here. Uh, I just mentioned because this is not, you know, this is not secondhand. I, I, I can mention 
four four names of, of workers who, who who work with us who have been you know plagued by that for years so and it's not theoretical i mean we interact with those spirits so uh, it, it is scary yeah i i i know yeah yeah we have people here that come from brazil to our center and some people that because there is nothing like that here they come to a spirit center right because there is no umbanda here well now there is i think there is one place here in new york um, uh, but, uh, you know, they just, uh, eventually, uh, one of them adapted and it's part of our group nowadays. Uh, yeah. But, but did they, did they bring spirits, uh, those lower spirits with them eventually? Well, we have some tough ones on our mediumship meetings that may have come with them or not, but we don't know. <laughs> what do you mean that they are plagued by them? Do you mean that they've sought? Obsessed. <laughs> sought the help of a psychic at some stage who was um, involved with low order spirits and then those low order spirits attached to them as the um, and in what way does that display? Uh, that displays in many ways uh, uh, in their day to day life. Uh, they, they got attached to them because, you know, they sort of met in a different a place and they got attached to them and they follow them. And you, you can read that in many books by Andre Luis, but how, how does it displace? In their day-to-day -day activities, they sort of interfere. And many times uh, during the, the work in the center, we interact with them through a medium and it's repeatedly the same thing. He was not supposed to come here. He didn't ask to leave, you know, our company. He owes us. He should do this and this and that. And it's a constant uh, uh, pressure or, or asking for, and it's very complicated. And they go, they don't go away. They come back and they come back and they come back. So very, very complex. Yeah, uh, the, the, uh, Sally, the, the person who is uh, in this process, uh, they, they start displaying um, symptoms that the medicine will call uh, uh, psychiatric diseases, right? Psychiatric problems. Uh, they, they have some, all sorts of psychiatric disorders that medicine will, will, uh, will present today. And many times this is just a spiritual obsession uh, because they are uh, opening themselves to the influence of these low order spirits that uh, normally low order spirits will dictate things, will, will try to impose their will on, uh, on those incarnate. And if you are not strong enough to resist, you end up, uh, they know how to, to, to go after your imperfections and uh and enhance your imperfections and your your desire to act on your imperfections so you know um any anyone that uh that 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 commits these crazy actions that you see going going to the extreme okay but we're just going to the extreme to 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 make us understand these serial killings that happen in this country here and frequently and more and more these are individuals that are clearly obsessed and accompanied by a number of spirits that when they have, they already have the inclination, they, have, they already have the, the, the tendency to do their, to, to, to act on these inferior tendencies that they have. And they have a bunch of spirits telling them, go, do, yes, that's exactly what you need to do. And they, they don't see it clear, think it clear, but, they, some of them hear voices and they will tell later, right? So this is all what happens uh, when you open yourself to inferior spirits. They will act on your inferior tendencies and enhance them if you don't, if you don't defend yourself. That's why we keep saying prayer is important because the, you know, through prayer, you elevate your thoughts, you elevate your vibrations. You prevent these connections to take hold uh, because, you know, it's, uh, we normally, our daily lives, we go up and down in our uh, vibrational levels, right? And uh, 
and they will uh, find openings to connect to us. And if we allow this connection to become permanent, then it's when it, we risk becoming an obsession and when it risks becoming all this that uh, I described and Luis was describing, right? So, uh, but again, uh, an obsession is a two-way street, right? You open yourself to it because you have um, some sort of uh, common interest with the spirits uh, one way or another. It can be from the past or it can be for the present, right? So, so basically, by um, elevating yourself in prayer and through good um, good work, then you're no longer a, free, uh, a vibrational match, and then the spirits can't actually access. But is there intervention that you do which can separate that if a person had, for instance, um, played a Ouija board or one of those things and, and then become obsessed? Is there also intervention that that is done? to yeah. do that is it just pure personal um prayer effort and and work both um the, this, the the work we do in our spirit centers a part of it is called this obsession which is specifically to, to separate these uh, spirits from these uh these uh individuals that they attach them to um divaldo normally says that uh, we all have our our personal obsessors uh, they are part of our, because throughout our evolutionary path, we created many enemies. Some of them have moved on, some of them have not, have, haven't forgave, forgave us. So those may still attach to us from time to time if we allow them. And during our lives, how many times we, you know, we, we become depressed, we become angry, and these are openings to them. Uh, but the thing is, uh, from that to allow them to be uh, constantly connected with us, it's we opening ourselves to them. Uh, through the prayers, through the, the, the positive thoughts, we prevent this connection to, to stay, to, 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 for them to be with us uh, all time, right? So they will sometimes connect to us and try to influence us, but if we, if we keep a positive uh, attitude and a positive vibration, uh, we make it very hard for them. But more serious cases, um, they, they require a more specific work. You have the, in Brazil, you have these psychiatric uh, spiritist hospitals, right? That have many patients that are victim of obsessions. The, the modern medicine calls psychiatric disturbances, but in the end, they are spiritual disturbances that uh, are treated in these uh, hospitals with the combination. Again, they are not very, there are not many, but there are some and they do a beautiful work. So um, we, the, the thing is, we cannot be afraid of obsessors as long as we're doing our part. If we're doing our part, they're not going to, to be able to affect us much. But if we're not doing our part, um, we, we open ourselves. They are always looking for an opportunity. And, and again, um, it's not only personal, but it may be to those close to us, right? So, um, you know, if, uh, if I'm, I, you know, if, if we, we protect ourselves, but uh, they cannot reach directly through us, they will go through our children, maybe, right? They will, if our children open themselves, sometimes they open themselves. So they, they cause problems for our children that they know it's going to upset us and cause us to to lose our uh, to to lower our vibration, and this is very common, right? This is a very common problem. Luis, yeah, Sally, this is not to don't don't be scared, please. Uh, I just no, no, mentioned I'm, here I'm just, because the the I'm point interested. is our thought pattern attracts other spirits with similar thought patterns. And I just think that we should be careful looking for those experiences uh, uh, in, in places where the thought patterns are, are not that great because that, you know, is bad. I can, can have, you know, not so good consequences, but, but just that. We are surrounded by spirits. If we cultivate, you know, good thought patterns, we'll have spirits with good thought patterns around us. So I would avoid Ouija boards. 
<laughs> <laughs> I've never seen one. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Here, here in the US, we all have seen what uh, we have seen, right? Because really? it's, they're they're very they're they're common. You you find toy stores Ouija boards. I've seen it in movies and heard about them, but I haven't um, actually seen a real one. There is a um, there is a movie that starts with a Ouija board. You know, it's one of these horror movies. Uh, uh, I don't exactly. I don't watch the horror movies, so I don't, I don't unless, <laughs> yeah, unless he has some uh, spiritual connection and importance, like the others or uh, the Sixth Sense, that makes a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, good references to spiritual life. Then otherwise, I don't. But anyway, I, I remember. I, I don't remember the movie, but there is a movie that starts with the Ouija board, and it goes from there. Uh. Okay. Okay. Number five. When spirits do not respond to certain questions, is it because they do not want to or because a higher power poses certain revelations? It could be both. There are certain matters that cannot be revealed and others that the spirit does not know about. If we strongly insist, will a spirit finally respond? No, if a spirit does not want to respond, it can easily leave. And that is why it is proper to wait when they tell you to, and especially when they tell you not to insist on receiving a response. Insisting on a response that they do not want to give is a sure means of being deceived. Yeah, um, again, um, the spirits, um, Luis actually mentioned in his class, right? Uh, the, the answers from the spirits that uh, in this last uh, this class, the answers from the spirits that uh, we we are not able to comprehend, right? So why wouldn't the spirit would a spirit not respond a question? Because maybe they don't have we don't even even have words for them to explain what what we uh, would be the answer, or because it's um, it's a revelation that uh, we are not prepared yet to receive or to listen to, right? Um, as they say here, certain matters that cannot be revealed. M meaning, they cannot be, why they cannot be revealed? Shouldn't we be receive all information possible? Well, uh, if we don't know what to do with information, we don't know how to interpret the information, the spirits know that. And they're not going to give us the information because we are, they know we are going to cause more harm than good by receiving the information. Or they don't know the answer, right? When we, uh, when we are talking here, it's the same thing. The serious teacher in, a, in college or every, anything, anywhere, if you ask a question that they don't know the answer, if they are serious enough and humble enough, they'll tell you, I don't know the answer. I'll try to find an, an, an answer for you or I'll study or I, I have no idea and I have no way of finding the answer. But, you know, if you are presumptuous of you, if you are full of yourself and you don't know the answer, you are going to uh, answer anything that comes to your mind and pretend you know, right? Because you are, you don't want to, to appear um, unlearned. Um, in the spirit, in, in the spirit case, in, in terms of the spiritual world, if a spirit don't know the answer and you insist, they will not answer, but someone will. There will always be spirits there that will that are willing to give a, whatever answer, answer any question with no regard for the truth, as we discussed before. So that's why Kardec tells us and the spirits tells us: do not insist. If you don't receive the answer, it's because it's not time. It is, they don't know, it's not time, many other things. But uh, it's important to understand that not everything will be revealed to us at the present because we may not even have words to describe it, right? So um, if, if at the time of Kardec, they start asking about, uh, uh, how how these flying objects that we'll have in the future work? There are words for it. There were not a word for words for it, right? 
uh, if, if the spirit asks, how can we communicate with, with each other in 150 years? Could the spirits describe a cell phone? No, there were no, not words for cell phones, right? So it's the same, that's the basic quest. They are not going to tell us things that there are no words for them to, to explain uh, these things to us. So we cannot ask how we're going, how our houses will be in 150 years, our physical, in, in the physical world, because there are many things that we'll have in our houses in 150 years that do not exist. There are no words for it. So how can this, they describe? They can try to describe using the words, but maybe, probably we won't understand. So that's the idea behind it, okay? Do people um, inquire about their own demise? I would assume that they wouldn't, they wouldn't get an answer, but... Yeah, actually, this is a question down here that uh, it's, it's part of the, the questions here. Um, I, I'm not, yeah, here, you see questions concerning the future starts shortly, and mm -hmm. death is part of it. So we will discuss it, Marlin. I, I hope we have time today. I don't know, but I think so. Uh, but again, um, well, there is a question there. So I'll, 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 I'll let us arrive there, and then we'll talk about it. Okay? Okay. Number six. Are all spirits capable of understanding the questions asked of them? Far from it. Less evolved spirits are incapable of understanding certain questions, which, however, does not prevent them from making a good or bad attempt, just like among yourselves. In certain cases, when it might be useful, a more enlightened spirit will often help a less knowledgeable one by whispering the response to it. This may be easily recognized by the contrast of certain responses with others or by the spirit itself confirming it. However, this only applies to sincere and unknowledgeable spirits and never to those who display false knowledge. Okay, so of course we can ask questions that the spirits that are here to help us don't know the answer. Um, but there are, again, there are spirits who think they know the answer and will try to answer us, right? So, and the answer may be far from truth. If you, if you go to any of those um, so-called prophets, right? There'll be false crises and false prophets and ask quest serious questions. They will give serious answers, but probably not correct answers because they think they know they have received the revelation according to their understanding and they through the revelation they know everything they know the answers is it true um unlikely so they are going to prevent to, to pre pretend to to answer they are going to answer according to their knowledge and maybe not the correct answer uh, Kardec's comment here in the part is that uh, if, uh, if a spirit is communicating with us and this will, will talk, let's say a, a medium is receiving a communication from a spirit, we ask a question and the, this spirit doesn't know the answer. If it's a serious question, if we deserve the answer, a more enlightened spirit can help and assist this spirit to give the answer that uh, we, we need to, to receive. So uh, it is uh, possible that we may receive the answer, not because the spirit knows, but because he, the spirit is helped. Like here also in the world, right? Uh, we ask a question, someone doesn't know the answer, ask a friend and then gives us the answer. Uh, it's the, the same thing, okay? Okay, okay. Um, here is questions concerning the future. Okay, 289. Can spirits unveil the future to us? If humans knew the future, they would neglect the present. And yet this is an issue about which you always insist on obtaining a precise answer. This should be regarded as a serious error because the manifestations of spirits is not a means of fortune telling. If you absolutely insist on an answer, however, 
it will be given by a frivolous spirit. We are constantly warning you about this. Yeah, the basic concept about the future is that we have free will. So we have the capacity, ability to change the future at any given time. So the, the spirits can unveil the future to us. Um, the first part here is important, right? Um, as imperfect spirits, as I always say, we are lazy. So if uh, we know that the future is going to be A, B, or C, we stop making any effort in the present because we believe that the future is there written in stone and there's nothing we can do to modify it or because we accommodate ourselves because we know the future uh, is going to be uh, this type or another type. So this is a reason that the spirit, one of the reasons that the spirits would not tell the future to us. Um, also, they're, they're not fortune tellers, serious spirits. And again, going back to the basics, it depends on our free will, right? Uh, we, the example of us going to the top of the mountain, seeing a car going up, there is a big hole. We say we predict the future. The car is going to fall into the hole. That's the future that we are predicting because we are seeing it, anticipating it. But if the, the car before the hole gets a flat tire, has to stop, and they, they have to go back to, to, to repair the tire. Well, we predicted the future. The future never happened. It was supposed to happen, but it never happened because other things happen and the free will happens, right? So with a flat, you got a flat tire, they decide to go back and repair the tire and they end up not falling. So that's the, the simplest and silliest example of how predicting the future is not guaranteed that the future is going to happen. It is possible to predict the future. Yes, it does not guarantee that the future will happen, okay? And just to not leave, him, leave Marlin uh, waiting for an answer, it also regards to our death, Marlin, because it depends on our free will, right? So we are supposed to, to die uh, when we are um, a certain age. But our free will change, can change that. Because of our good actions, we can be given an extra time here. If we are using this incarnation to, to, to help us progress, the spirits can uh, give us a little bit of extra vital fluid for us to, mm -hmm. to live a little bit longer. Or if we are going to, we are harming ourselves involuntarily, right? Living in a place that... Uh, is unhealthy or uh, with unhealthy habits, drinking too much or causing harm to our physical body, then our death is going to come before we are supposed to because we caused our, uh, the, the end of our physical life with the harm to our physical body. So that's why the spirits can tell us the future, but it's never guaranteed. Uh, the only guarantee that we have is that we are going to go back to the spiritual world. Uh, this physical body dies. That's the natural law. But when and how uh, it is there in our plan around the time, the, the, the type of death, if it's a peaceful, through disease or violent, but it's not guaranteed. It can change. Uh, mm -hmm. It is said that uh, Chico Xavier gained 20 years of uh, more of his life. Divaldo is 95 and uh, apparently he also was given more, more time because of the benefits he's bringing to us. So uh, we can do that. I heard of a famous medium in Brazil in the 60s that died in a car accident. And uh, uh, Chico Xavier was told that uh, the spirit has done very, so good to, to others. And uh, he was really running the risk of ca causing damage in the future to himself and to others. Mm -hmm. So the spirits to his benefit decided that it was better to take him back to the spiritual world and abbreviate his physical life. So, you know, our different aspects. Uh, uh, the only thing that I can say here is uh, there is no guarantees, but uh, there is uh, there is uh, something there in our reincarnation 
in reincarnation plan that will tell uh, how long, more or less, we are going to live uh, if everything goes according to plan. But things don't go according to plan. We know that. Well, um, our free will creates our destiny. Exactly. And our destiny will then take us to wherever it needs to go when the time is right. Exactly that. Perfect. Yes, exactly that. And that answers your question. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Okay. Number eight. Nevertheless, aren't some future events spontaneously and correctly announced by spirits? It might happen that the spirit foresees matters that it considers proper to disclose or that are its mission to reveal to you. It is in such cases, however, that we should be most concerned with deceptive spirits who amuse themselves by making predictions. You can only judge the degree of confidence they merit by observing the circumstances as a whole. So, um, yes, the spirits foresee matters. Uh, in Osular, we have the, uh, the preparation in the spiritual world for the big war that is going to start. And so they are foreseeing the future. Uh, does it guarantee that there's, the war is going to happen? No, but the spirits see that it's very likely that it's going to happen and it, re it did happen. So they prepare themselves. They are preparing themselves for the assistance to the physical world for all the ca casualties that is going to happen in the war. Um, the spirit tells us that we are moving in, uh, into a world of regeneration from a world of trials and atonements. This is predicting the future, isn't it? Yes. Right? They are telling us the future. The world is going to become, the earth is going to become a world of regen regeneration, no longer a world of trials and atonements. But it's a generic prediction. It doesn't give specific dates because the specific dates depends on our free will. We, have, we, uh, uh, we always say that we have to be very careful with spirits telling us specific dates on specific predictions for two things because of, because of our free will specific dates are never uh, guaranteed here and because also the spirits see time from the spiritual world in a different manner than we see time here um, again time around earth on the lower lower levels of the spiritual world is exactly as time here on earth but time for a more evolved spirit, a perfect spirit or a, an, an evolved spirit is different. Uh, we, don't, we, we cannot explain it and define it, but we know it's different. So they are not going to be predicting exact times. And I, I, we know, we, we said that many times. Whenever you see predictions of an exact date, uh, discard it. If they happens, they happen. But... Uh, there was a famous uh, prediction that, um, that many people attributed to Chico Xavier that uh, he said that in 50 years, if uh, the world doesn't change, that um, something this or that was going to happen. And this year was 2019. And many people are saying that the pandemic is, a, is what Chico pre uh, predicted. And it's nothing like that. And Chico never said anything like that. But, um, you know, that's what people love dates and love exact predictions and they allow to believe in those and uh, many of those are deceptive spirits amuse themselves by making predictions we have to be very careful joel can i ask you um is it is it true that if we set an intention ourselves so i might um have some kind of deep desire, which presumably is created by my um, predisposition to that uh, to that situation. So I, I feed it with my own energy and I, I like visualize it and I, I grow it and I grow the dream of it and I grow the, um, the visualization of that. And then that is what is likely 
to predict uh, to be predicted in my future but then i can for some prompt comes along and i change my focus and now going in a different direction do are those likely to manifest in my future and and does it influence i know that obviously spirit is determining but I'm assuming that spirit is also determining my focus and determining the um, my my visualization and my intention for those things. So as a as a combined call it effort for want of a better word or, or combined action is taking my life in a certain direction. And then if it changes, does that? Do both of those futures play out? Every thought you've said in previous talks, every thought that's thought, every um, dream that's dreamt is actually creating a reality or a thought form or something that is impacting the world. So if I understand it correctly. So therefore the futures that we create can be multiple and would they all play out? And is this part of why it's not predictable because actually we are changing and we are growing and and changing direction as we go? Uh, I hope I understood the, 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 what you yeah. were asking here. The, what came to my mind while you were describing it was the idea of, um, of our evolutionary path being, uh, we are all uh, climbing a mountain and we are all going to reach perfection, which is, which is the top of the mountain. There, there are million ways different ways of climbing the mountain and you can deviate in the middle of it and choose a different path and still will take you to the top of the mountain eventually so you know we change our our future at uh, at all times by our actions our thoughts our uh, desires and uh it could be in a positive way or in a negative way you can delay our advancement it can uh, it can uh, increase the speed of our advancement, but uh, it will all help us build us as, as uh, uh, spirits that are progressing and evolving our, our mistakes and our uh, correct action. So I think that everything contributes and uh, the future that uh, is uh, planned ahead on our reincarnation uh, it's something that at any moment we can change and we are changing. And uh, in the book, Missionaries of the Light, uh, they tell us that uh, we are, normally we do 40 to 60% of what we plan for our reincarnation, the average us. The very few are what they call the completers that do 100%. And of course, few also do less than what they're supposed, but there is always improvement. But this, so you are supposed to do a hundred different things here in the in the this physical world in this incarnation uh, the spirits know that very unlikely you do the 100 so you do 40 of them uh successfully you try 20 and fail and then in the middle you decided to try different ones and uh su succeed in some fail in some it's still part of uh of your spiritual journey of evolutionary journey and um, there is no um, uh, there is no fatality or there is no fatalism in your uh, in your journey. It's always based on your choices and free will, and it can change. It can uh, modify as you go along. Um, I don't know and if I answered. You very yes, um, a large portion of it, and then my last portion of that question is: so if you change direction and you take a deviation or a detour. Is the original intention still going to likely play out at some point in this lifetime or another lifetime? Or has one taken a detour and therefore avoided or, or changed that reality to the extreme that that becomes null and void? Um, if it's something that uh, it's, it's, uh, it's needed for your spiritual evolution, you will come back to that eventually in another life, in this life, in another life in three lives time, because it's it's something that is relevant for you. It's important for your evolutionary path. If it's something that, uh, you know, you can uh, acquire by, by evolving in other paths and you don't need to go back to that 
then you don't. Then it becomes something that will become part of uh, your um, your knowledge or moral or intellectual progress by just by leaving other things. Of you know, the spirit tells us we don't need to go through every learning aspect, or you don't need to be a doctor, a lawyer, a scientist, a philosopher, a, an artist. Uh, you just need to go to, to acquire knowledge in those areas uh, as you evo evolve, but you don't need to go specifically in each one of them. But, uh, you know, uh, if, if it's important for you, let's say, you know, a simple, a simple, uh, a simple example, you fight with your brother, let's say, and you fight and you never talk to him again in this, uh, in this incarnation. You are supposed to repair uh, the, the relationship with him in this life, but you decided that uh, you, you don't want to waste your time, you don't want to talk to him, you don't care about him, and you're never going to speak to him again. This is something that will have to be resolved in the future. This is something you are just postponing, right? <laughs> yes. So this, you have to go back to this. Uh, maybe not specifically with him, because maybe he moves ahead, moves forward, he forgives you, he loves you unconditionally, and it's just on your part. So you have to deal with it, the, with the feeling, with the sentiment, with the what everything that you feel related to him is something that you have to work on. Maybe not in this life, maybe in a future life, maybe with him, maybe with someone else, but uh, the same situation, more similar situation. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. And, and now the other side of it, you made all the effort to, 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 you love him, you try everything on your part and he doesn't care. He doesn't listen to you. Well, you did your part. You mm. don't need to go back there because mm. you already moved, moved on. You forgave him. You uh, sublimated your love for him that you no longer carry anything. Now mm. it's, it's his part. He has to do his job. If he doesn't, he didn't accept anything. Well, you did what you could. Now mm. it's on him. Okay, so you don't have to go back to that. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. Number nine. Yes. Okay. What kinds of predictions should we distrust the most? All which are not of general usefulness. Personal predictions can nearly always be considered apocryphal. Yes, so here we're talking specific predictions, right? We should always take specific predictions, personal predictions with a grain of salt. Uh, it's not that they may not happen. You know, I, I told some of you have heard and uh, Louise was with me actually when we went to this uh, lady that uh, read the future in uh, coffee grains or something like that. You remember that, Louise, when we were teenagers, right? And um, and she was only giving me personal predictions. I don't remember. I, I wrote, but I, I, I lost it. But I remember two things that she said that came out to be truth. One very generic, right? That was going to to be not, I don't remember if she said married or connected to a blonde uh, lady, right? Which, you know, I ended up marrying Jusara. The other thing was that I never believed what happened because I had no desire or intention was that I was going to live abroad and I was going to leave Brazil and was not going to live in Brazil. And I, at that time, I was, we, how long, how old we were with? Probably 19, 20, 21, something like that, right? I had no intention, no desire of living in Brazil, um, living abroad. I, had, I never thought of myself living abroad. So I, I left at it because I didn't thought it was possible. But again, it happened, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, we cannot take it, uh, you know, personal prediction. I, and again, uh, living abroad, I could, I, when I was invited, I could have said no, right? Free will. And uh, I had the opportunity. I could have said no and never left. So that's what they're saying here. Very, very careful with personal predictions because can nearly always, they are not saying always, nearly always. So they may, 
sometimes have some truth, but uh, very careful not to to consider them seriously. Okay. At that Please. particular time, <clears throat> I, I remember the event. It was eighty two or something like that, and. Uh, I remember overall, but one particular prediction was that I would have an airplane and I would fly you guys. And I never got an airplane. <laughs> a, a boat, yes. An airplane, never. <laughs> you must go back and demand it. <laughs> yeah. It all just goes to free will. Uh, yeah. Whatever you choose. Yes. We are missing the airplane, Luis. Please, you know, it's not it's not too late yet. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, okay, number ten. So let's let's the last one. We're stopping okay. there after this one. Okay. For what purpose do spirits spontaneously announce events that end up not occurring? Most of the time to entertain themselves with the credit, credulity, fright, or elation they cause, and then they laugh at the disappointment. Sometimes, however, these deceptive predictions have a serious purpose, to test the persons to whom they are directed, revealing the nature of the good or evil sentiments they arouse when received. An example would be an announcement that could arouse greed or ambition at the prospect of an inheritance at someone's someone's death, etc. So here, you know, a continuation of what we're discussing. Let's say, you know, the plane that Luis was going to to own the plane. Uh, this, if it was, I don't know if this was a medium. I don't remember. I have no idea if she was a medium or she was just reading the future. In the in, I, I think it was uh, coffee. I think it was coffee. Uh, you know the, you, you, that coffee that leaves the the, the, the grains. I don't know. Remember, but um, the the spirits will be there. There will be always spirits around to to make fun of us if they can and laugh at us, like we have incarnated people that uh, make fun of others, the bullies, the ones that uh, take pleasure in uh, causing uh, distractions, disturbance to others. They'll be on the other side this, uh, and giving deceptive predictions um, to test us, uh, to make a fool of us, uh, or to cause us to, 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 to go into um, a wrong path, right? Uh, on going back to the, 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 the serious discussion we had about obsession, right? A spirit that uh, is personal, personally connected to us may take this opportunity to, to cause us to increase our greed, our ambition, our inferior tendencies, and connect to us to act together with us on our inferior tendencies. So that's the risk of this type of, uh, of um, connections with the spiritual world that can cause us, uh, it's dangerous to us, it can cause us harm. So we have to be aware that uh, there will always be spirits trying to, to connect to us uh, if we allow them, okay? I actually went to a woman many, many, many years ago, but actually the information that I got there was enormously helpful. I mean, it's, um, it really was quite um, transformational and also that... Um, it was it was definitely very accurate. I mean, she told me um, habits of my father's that I'd forgotten, um, spoke of my sister who had died when we were little, and um, everything she said was absolutely accurate. Um, I certainly did realize that it dictated some of the decisions that I made after that, but I never felt as though it was anything other than enormously helpful, but very definitely predictive. Uh, and, and it goes back to what uh, we discussed before, right? Serious intention and deserving. So it, there's two aspects, right? You were there, you went there with serious intention. You, you didn't went there to, to have fun. And uh, you deserved because 
you know, we don't know, you know, eventually you know why you receive all this guidance and, and assistance, but because you, you, it was the right moment, you had to receive that information, it was helpful to you. So okay. if, uh, you received everything that you needed for the right reasons. That's why we keep insisting that uh, not every time you go to these uh, places, uh, uh, you are going to be deceived because if you, ha you are serious and you deserve to receive the, intent the, the assistance, right? Uh, it's, it's going to come. And uh, when we talk, I know you went to John of God, right? And uh, you know everything that happened there, that happened there uh, during his time. And, uh, but a lot of people were helped and a lot of people received what they needed. Why? Because they deserved to be helped and needed the assistance. And he was an instrument of helping those people, right? His personal... Uh, mis yeah, he wasn't uh, perfect. Mm. Yeah, and uh, it's his responsibility and he's facing the consequences. Mm. Well, we try to not recommend people going there because we knew, we heard about these rumors and we were concerned. But uh, again, doesn't mean that people that went there uh, were not helped. Many were. That's why it became so successful, right? So again, um, it's a different. It's 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 separate separate things that we have to analyze. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So this is it for us today. Um, we like to remind you that next Sunday it's Q and A. So please bring your questions. And uh, we'll, Elmo, Elmo, I don't think Elmo will be back, but uh, I'll be here. Uh, maybe Luis will help me with the Q&A also. And um, also uh, just uh, for those, I so, think Tommy. So, sorry to intrude. Yes. I just noticed that Eric is present. Was he as well in that particular visit? I don't remember. Did yeah, I'm not sure if he was with us. I, I remember there were three of us, but I don't remember. I, I remember it was me, you, but I don't think it was Eric. But Ab I don't. Abud and the girls. I remember Glicia, that cousin of Glicia. Well, oh, yeah. Sorry yeah. to Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I thought he was going it to manifest. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't you. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, all right. So, um, Tomorrow is uh, it's a holiday here. It's Juneteenth. Uh, Tommy, we'll be closed. Okay, we'll, the center will not be open, right? So just to let you know, I know you yeah, you go there on Mondays. So the SGNY will be closed tomorrow. All right, thank you. Thanks. Um, so um, I think that's it, right? Uh, Carol, can you do our final prayer? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, John, Luis, Sarita, and everyone. Infinite creator and supreme intelligence, we give thanks for the opportunity today to be together as brothers and sisters for our study of the medium's book. We give thanks to our spiritual benefactors, the good spirits, the helpers, the healers who are with us also guiding us inspiring us and helping us to continue on the high road, the path of evolution. May we continue with our questions to spirits as the questions be useful. May they be concise and may they be serious so that we can avoid the answers from frivolous spirits May we always be mindful of deceptions as we receive our messages. We can question, we can analyze, and we should be doing this. May we stay present in this eternal moment as we create our future through our free will. We are moving toward a planet of regeneration and there is no exact date that can be noted. May we honor and give thanks to our fathers, our grandfathers, and our stepfathers, and father figures on this day of Father's Day. May we continue to appreciate the gifts that they have given, and that we can also give thanks to them for what they have provided. 
may we continue throughout the week with our prayers, with our studies, with our mindfulness, knowing that we are never alone and that we have the guidance available as we ask for help and as we do our part. May we receive the love, light, and peace of Christ within us, not only today, but throughout the week, helping us to remain in an elevated consciousness and an open heart. As we close this meeting now, we give thanks for the information and the guidance that we have received. And may we put it to good use through assistance to others, our family members, loved ones, those who are in need. And may we include the greater world in our aspirations for prayer. Great need is, is certainly needed and required at this time for all who are suffering. We include suffering spirits who are also asking for help. May we do our part in providing this love and this light. We humbly ask now for safety and protection as we go forth to family, friends, loved ones, and coworkers, reminding ourselves to be beacons of light. Go in gratitude and in peace, so be it. <laughs>